And now here's some video you have to see out of Tennessee. A delivery driver was recorded by a doorbell camera doing a happy dance right there after he found a sweet surprise left on a family's doorstep. Sarah Barnes says she did a lot of Christmas shopping online this season and wanted to give something back to those who delivered all her good. She wanted to give them a reason to smile. Barnes says while a lot of drivers take a treat, none of them responded quite like that. Well, CBS 46 always fighting for our vets, and sometimes that means highlighting those who fought for us. And today, we're sharing the story of a Vietnam prisoner of war who was held captive alongside the late senator and war hero John McCain. CBS 46's Bobeth Yates has a story. It was a combat mission that took a turn for the worse when this veteran became a prisoner of war. This aircraft, I was flying when I got shot down, this little replica of it. Lieutenant Colonel James Williams remembers the details of May 20th, 1972, like it was yesterday. It was four of them versus four of us. And during the air-to-air -air engagement, uh, I got shot down by a MiG-21. As he parachuted to the ground, Williams says he saw the Vietnamese moving in towards him. And five hours later, they eventually found him. About 12 of them was all over me. The first thing they did was to scrub me completely nude and, and tie my hands behind me and off through the jungle we went. So for the next two days, I was put on display going through village to village before they actually turned me over to the army. During that time, William says he experienced everything from being spit on to beaten. And things got worse when he was placed in the prison camp. In fact, he recently embarked on a trip to Vietnam to find closure. Part of the whole trip was for us. We had a chance to meet with some of the uh, Vietnamese pilots as well as some of the Army people who were fighting the Vietnam War. You know, we was all adversaries during the, during the war time, but now this was a way of us healing by meeting the people we actually fought against. Despite everything that happened, Colonel Williams says he would do it all again. Fighting for our vets, Bobeth Yates, CBS 46 News. Now on CBS 46 News at 6. Two arrests in two weeks. Another Cobb County teacher has been arrested for how he handled a child with special needs. I said you need to leave like you asked you. Three officers need us to leave after less than a minute. Journalists are entitled to the same right of access as to general That's true. So if we're asking you to leave right now, okay? I know, we need to understand what grounds this is. Team coverage tonight as CBS 46 is stonewalled in our efforts to get answers. It's a restaurant me. report card visit gone wild. And seven months after we exposed health violations at a Denny's in Lithonia, there's a major update. I'm Adam Murphy, I'll tell you what it is. But first, we are following breaking news. McDonough Middle and High Schools on lockdown. As police search for a shooting suspect, investigators say the suspect is in the woods behind the public, uh, that's the public's grocery store on Racetrack Road. We will have updates on air and on the CBS 46 News app. Stay with us for that. Plus, for the second time in less than two weeks, a Cobb County teacher accused of inappropriate behavior toward a student. Investigators say Charles Lennis Black slapped a student with special needs in the face at Hillgrove High School. And tonight, Black is charged with simple battery. Our team coverage tonight on this latest incident at a Cobb County school. District leaders had police escort the CBS 46 Bulldog off property when he tried to get answers. We'll hear from him in a moment, but let's begin with Haley Mason, who has the very latest for us. Haley. Rick, this latest incident is certainly raising a lot of questions to this school district. This makes the second Cobb County teacher arrested in a little over a week's time for allegedly mistreating a student with special needs. A Cobb County judge says 79 year old Charles Black is not allowed back at Hillgrove High School after he allegedly hit a special needs student. Black is a substitute teacher at Hill Grove. Court documents say he was trying to correct the student who was touching a computer in class. The warrant says Mr. Black placed his hand on the student's arm and told him not to touch the computer again. The student, who is nonverbal, slapped Black on the head near his face, and Black slapped the student back. They need to be properly taken care of. Some families tell us they think the special needs teachers may need better training. Definitely needs to be some more training or something looked at that's definitely Something needs to be looked at because that's not that's just not right. 
A week before Black's arrest, special needs teacher Kelly Lewis was arrested for making a five-year-old boy sit in soiled clothes for hours to teach a lesson on bathroom habits at Frey Elementary. I think they get burned out. This parent was more sympathetic. Uh, it takes a lot of patience and there's a lot of stress on them. So maybe more frequent breaks or um, just a little bit more understanding. Last school year, Black was named Substitute Teacher of the Month. This school newsletter says he's one of the most loved substitutes. And he's worked for several years in the Transition Academy for older students with special needs. We went to Black's house today to ask him about what happened. A family member told us they didn't have a comment for us. Right now, Black is being charged with simple battery provoked. He is out on bond. Reporting live in Powder Springs, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. Thank you, Haley. So Cobb County Schools instructing its officers to remove the CBS 46 Bulldog from district headquarters. That's a building that is completely open to the public. Anybody can go in there. All because he was simply attempting to ask questions of school officials after two teachers now arrested in separate incidents of alleged violence or cruelty towards students. Chief Investigator Jonathan Carlson had only been in the district's office for just a few minutes before those officers arrived. Jonathan, you were ushered out of there. Yeah, this was an intimidating and unfortunate display of obstructing a journalist from doing his job. And in the end, the parents of the Cobb County School District who didn't get access to information are the real victims. Police department headquarters across the street. In, in, in the, in the, I'm sorry, sir. I said you need to leave like he asked you. Okay. At least one officer with the Cobb County School District Police Department getting heated within minutes of us showing up to district headquarters to simply do our job. Question taxpayer paid district employees about recent newsworthy events impacting the safety of students. We made multiple calls and emails to multiple staffers before heading inside the public entrance at headquarters. After identifying ourselves at the reception desk, within minutes, officers began to arrive. Well, Jonathan, CBS 46, how are you? Good breath. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we're just hoping to talk to uh, Nan Keel, Julian Coco, and John Floresta. Do you have an appointment? No, we've emailed and called, and they're not returning our emails or calls. Sorry, they're not present right now. Okay, so we can wait for them. It is private property. Okay. Okay, and unless you have an appointment. Just to be clear, we've been here less than a minute, and okay. you're already asking us to leave. Okay. Right. Okay. Are you the chief? Or? No, I'm Officer Bradley okay. from the school district police. Is there a supervisor here that we can talk to? Police department headquarters is across the street. In, 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 in the, in the, I'm sorry, sir? I said you need to leave like he asked you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So three officers need us to leave after less than a minute. Well, when you're not complying with our request, sir, to leave, because you don't have an appointment, then, you know, we were unsure exactly what was going okay. on, so we just had okay. to go for the so. Okay. Thank you for your time. As officers guarded the door and clearly decided who they wanted to let in, we called our attorneys. As I explained to you, if you don't have an appointment, then you have really no, uh, shall I say, purpose to, to or, or exchange of information here, so we're asking that you leave. Journalists are entitled to the same right of access as the general That's true. public. So if the, we're asking you to leave right now, okay? Does every parent have an appointment before they walk in this building? Officers didn't have a clear answer for that. We complied and went across the street. But more bothersome, we never did get answers from the accountability or communication staffers paid by the taxpayer to give public information, including and starting with Superintendent Chris Ragsdale, Chief Strategy and Accountability Officer John Floresta, Director of Content and Marketing Julian Cosa, and Press Relations Coordinator Nan Keel. In September, another CBS 46 reporter did a story on a district matter in which the district took issue with our reporting. Today, they sent us a written statement saying, in part, as stated previously, due to specific and repeated concerns with accuracy in reporting, the Cobb County School District will not participate in CBS 46's stories. Our attorneys, meanwhile, have contacted Cobb County Schools, and in a statement, they say, in part, the First Amendment guarantees media access to public places, just like anyone else, if a government building like a school district office is open to the public, it's open to the media. The government can't make one set of rules for the public and a different set of rules for the media or pick and choose which media are allowed access and which aren't. I have yet to see a legal response from the school district's attorney. We won't stop pressing for answers.